Final match of the afternoon session, final match of the group stages. We are almost there. The business end of this town shootout grand final for the Gary Forbes trophy, which will be decided around about 11 o'clock tonight. Both these players know they're through. Who's going to go through as group winner? It's Darren Matthew and Martin McIntosh to complete our quarter-final lineup. Martin got off to the better start in this group, winning his first three matches, beating Fraser Allen 4-1, Patty McCarran 4-1 and Davey Dornan 4-0. Slow start for Darren Matthew. Had to wait until the very end of yesterday. 10 p.m. last night he played his first match. Everyone else had played once, some had played twice. It wasn't the best quality encounter against Patty McCarran, but he did manage to get a draw out of that match. And then this morning, he really did turn up, played a lot better, winning 4-1 over David Dornan, and then beat Fraser Allen 4-1 and looked a bit more like the player that we know he is. So Martin sits top of the group with six points, Darren Matthew with five points. If Martin gets at least a point, he will top the group. A win for Darren Matthew, he will top the group. Simple as that. And it is Darren Matthew to break first. Not the best of breaks. They haven't really opened up in the triangle area, not much movement around the black. So the first frame could be a tactical affair. Martin really, you can tell, wants to be aggressive. He wants to try and find a way of entertaining the crowd and taking something on, but he really had nothing to go at. Well, reds is his choice. Two reds and a black, middle of the pack. causing a problem as he tried to nudge them open there just caught a couple of balls on the way through and that hasn't helped him not a lot he could do from that situation so Martin gets his chance and they've just been opened up enough that these yellows are quite inviting Martin misses his opening ball, was hampered queuing. Still expected him to pot it. <laughs> Darren deciding the clearance wasn't on, red on the right hand side and black in the middle of the cluster. Still a problem for him. So just trying to block off the bottom left pocket that Martin will probably need for some of his yellows. Martin's reluctant, reluctant to take the yellow over the right-hand corner pocket. That's giving him some control in this frame. and He isn't guaranteed to make the clearance if he goes that way. Two yellows to the left of the black are awkward. Well, he's going to take the risk anyway. He's now in a situation that if he misses, it's a pretty clean run to the line for Darren. Didn't even go for it. Well, it's a strange visit from Martin McIntosh. Looked like he wanted to be aggressive and then almost took on a pot that didn't really go. Well, 
Where is this black? Not far off. That was very risky from Martin, flying that black round the table. Oh, you're kidding me. Not been a great opening frame. No, this is the sort of form that Darren was showing yesterday, l last evening when he had to wait so long before he played. His last few matches he played so much better. Still not a great chance. Oh, still hasn't opened up for Martin. The yellows on the left-hand side are still a problem. It's been a problem the whole way through the frame. That's a really good pot, and this could work out well for him. Yeah. Two for one. Just opens things up enough. This is a comfortable-ish pot to the top corner. Well, why play it that way if you can just go around and uh, knock it in the other? Two in a row. <laughs> Not the obvious pocket, but it goes in. Where's he going to put this one? Very bizarre opening frame, and either player settling. Well, I think that's an understatement. They both know they're through, so. Yeah, both through. Similar to scenario, players can relax a little bit. The only thing they are really playing for is finishing top of the group. When the draw is done at seven o'clock, the group winners will be drawn out against the group runner-up so you'd normally say it's good to finish top of the group and avoid the players playing well who finish top of their group but there are some big banana skins that are finished in the second in the group Jordan Shepard finished second in his group Cannon Singleton topping it Chris Melling topped group two Alan Dixon who looked to be in great form yesterday came second as Martin finally gets this opening frame on the board. Yeah, let's forget about that one, shall we? Yeah, let's move on. I'm just going to wrap up the rest of the, the group. Groups, group three, Dave McNamara. He's through with Simon Fitzsimmons. They've got exactly identical records. And we think, yet to be confirmed, but we think David McNamara goes through top of the group because of a better head-to-head -head record meaning that you've got Simon Fitzsimmons as a potential opponent if you finish top of the group. And then, of course, it's Martin or Darren in group four. So I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference, although I wouldn't want to play Chris Melling in the quarterfinals, the form he has showed so far this weekend. Mentioned earlier, I could hear Stone Roses. Just had a look. Same venue tonight. Seven o'clock to start. It's the complete Stone Roses. So that must be the uh, another room in this venue, I guess. I'm hoping so. Well, yeah, because otherwise we've got a problem. Foul <laughs> <laughs> from the break from Martin gives Darren an opportunity. Here in frame two, these are the opportunities he was taking earlier on today. Just reaches the pocket. I was going to say, key is avoiding those reds and landing in the top half of the table. After that, it would be simple. He has not avoided the reds. Oh, it's a good recovery pot. And he'll be very pleased with the way the cue has landed. So, recovery made. 
Yeah, much, much better this frame. Oh dear, done it again. Well, hard work done, and that's just a rush of blood from Darren. Tough pot that for Martin. So it's going to give Darren a second opportunity. Which he's not certain to take in the way he started off this match. That was a loose positional shot. Never easy when the object ball's right over the corner pocket. And he's missed that pot by a distance. This time it's Martin with a bad miss. Very similar to the opening frame here in frame two. Neither player settling down at all. Mistakes are plenty. And there's no real clearance on for Martin. It's just going to be a snooker I think Darren Matthew could have had a dozen goes from that situation and not got close to making that yellow the gap was tiny very hard to judge coming off a couple of cushions and Martin this really is a good opportunity to take a 2-0 lead. Controller pace on that shot. Simplest of blacks. And he does take that 2-0 lead. Yeah, strange atmosphere around this one. It's almost as though everyone in the venue just wants to see the draw for the quarters. Yeah, we know our eight men in the quarterfinals. And neither of these players look like they have uh, the focus in this match. And the crowd are, are sort of quieting down a little bit as well. breaks off in frame three and it's another bad break it could be in for another drawn out frame this was me in the pub I'd just give him another smash but this is, that's probably why I'm not playing at this level <laughs> well he may still well do that no oh, no he's decided to keep it tied up A fluke for Martin into the centre pocket did make his intended pot though oh, just starting to open up still got a couple of options spoke to Martin this afternoon when he was in the arena just watching the previous games he said himself 
minimum target of reaching the final. OK. So he's looking to go better. He made the semi-final in a... Was it the Newbury event? He just wants to uh, stroll in down the stairs in the uh, the final match of, of this grand final, his home event. I can guarantee you once he sits in his chair he'll be thinking of another target. Yeah, I think uh, you're better off setting the targets of winning and being OK with the runner-up. It'll be a really good achievement for Martin, especially considering he made the semi-final of the last town shootout. If he did make the final here this weekend, it'll be a great end to the season for him. Not as highly rated a player as some of the other stars on show. And he's very keen throughout this series to show what he can do, show that he can mix it with some of these guys. And he's done that. And just like that, Martin McIntosh lead 3-0. No way back for Darren Matthew. Four and a half minutes left. <laughs> Having a laugh with the DJ. Get my music right, says. Want it straight away. There's Patty McCarran, who's been knocked out. Staying to enjoy the evening. It's one of the things with this event, a lot of the players do stay and really enjoy the evening all the way through. It really is a party atmosphere at the town shootout. There's about three and a half minutes left on the clock. If Martin wants to try and wrap this up 4-0. There's certainly not enough time Darren Matthew to get back into the match. So we do now know that Martin will finish top of his group. Go through as the group winner. Darren will go through as the runner-up. And the best break in the match for Martin. Much better split. Yellow at the bottom of the table needs to be developed. Has been. Unfortunate that he's left the white where the yellow was. Two and a half minutes for Darren to prevent the whitewash. Oh, no. Just too many mistakes like that in this match for Darren. Martin, that's not the greatest positional shot. This is going to be very difficult to land on this last yellow. Just slid by the black, they didn't want to. Needs a bit of luck to get around the back of the red. He's played it all right, that. Yeah, he'd be happy with that. That's a good shot. Oh, he didn't want that connection. Pot this if you can. <laughs> that has to be a foul. Foul has been called. Not required though for Darren Matthew. So 
So it's going to be 3 1 rather than 4 0. Ah, oh, lovely. Little exhibition shot. Where's the white going to end up? Wow. <laughs> Stays on the table. It does get a frame on the board. Still trails by three frames to one, though. Might just about get the break off. A reminder, the knockout stages, four quarterfinals. Oh, they're just going to shake hands. So victory for McIntosh, he's through as group winner. Darren will be back tonight as well as runner-up. The draw for the quarterfinals will be at 7 o'clock, so about 20 minutes time. That will be over on the event's Facebook channels, if you can search for those. Courtesy of the Orange Media Group. And this is how we stand after the group stages. Four groups of five, only two could go through. And we have... Our quarter finalists Callum Singleton winning group one Jordan Shepherd left it late but he came back strong to qualify and knock out James Jack disappointment there for Kean Monaghan Chris Melling who's been the best player I've seen so far Callum Singleton I'm sure will disagree Alan Dixon through with him he's looked very handy indeed disappointment there for Liam Dunster of course for George Tierney and Dennis Taylor who uh, came up dry uh, but he's enjoyed his experience of this town shootout so those from the first two groups and completing the lineup, Group 3, Dave McNamara and Simon Fitzsimmons, who knocked out Mark Boyle in the previous game. They go through with, uh, well, the same, uh, the same record. We'll just have to qualify who won that group, whether it was Fitzsimmons or McNamara on the on the head-to-head. -head. But we know they're both through. We'll get that uh, clarified by the time we come back on air at 8 o'clock. Group 4, we know Martin McIntosh has won it. Played 4-1-4 and Darren Matthew through with him. So 7 o'clock for the draw over on our social media channels. Myself and Simon will speak to you again from 8 o'clock live here from the Lemon Tree in Aberdeen for the denouement, the conclusion of what's been a thrilling season of town shootout pool. And the grand final reaches its conclusion at 8. We'll see you then.